Hi everyone, I'm Thea and welcome to another episode of Mythical Creatures. Today we're actually going to be talking about two separate creatures and that's because both of them are mostly canines and also because there's not a lot of info on both of them and I kind of wanted to give you guys a little bit more this week. Before we start, I said in our last video that I would be wearing parts of my costume in random videos. This is the handmade cloak that I got. Um, a friend of mine, her aunt, made it for me and it was so nice of her. It's really, really thick. It's as thick as a blanket, which is going to be really good for Halloween. It has a hood and has pockets and it has a little clip right here to tie it together. It's really, really awesome, and this is the print that went on the inside. Love it. Okay, back to what we were talking about. The first creature we are going to be talking about are called church grims. And then the second one is a Celtic creature called, I think it's pronounced Cusith. That's how I'm going to say it. I'm sorry if I'm wrong. But um, church grims are... English in origin, though they're they're based off of a creature from Swedish Sweden, I think. Um, and basically, what they are is people used to believe that the first person or creature that was buried in a cemetery by a church would stay there for eternity to protect the other spirits that pass through there, and to avoid having Uncle Todd stick stuck in a cemetery for all eternity, they would take a usually a fully black dog, like a black colored dog, and they would bury them in the northernmost part of the cemetery. And so that dog will stay for eternity and protect every other spirit that comes through. They're known mostly to protect spirits, but there are there has been times where they protected a living person. They this is the part I don't like about the story. They would usually bury the dog alive. That sucks. Sometimes they would instead of a dog, they'd have a ram, a horse, a rooster, or a raven. And Still, they would bury him alive, and that... I don't like that. Dogs are really too good for this world. <laughs> um, they... From what I've gathered, don't quote me on this, they were based on a creature called a Krokogrim of Sweden, which appears in the form of a lamb, and they would, it was basically the exact same concept, except for they would take a lamb, I think the lamb was already dead, and they would bury them under the altar of the church, and that lamb would protect the spirits that got buried in the cemetery around it. Um, now, to the Kusif. I know, I, I said, you know, there's not a lot of information on either of them. These are just their basic stories. But a Kusith is a Scottish creature. They are the size of a young bull, and it looks like a wolf with green, like a really dark green fur. They're said to have, okay, their fur is green, but sometimes it's white. Their tails are very long, and they're either coiled or braided. Their paws are the size of a large man's hand, and they're said to live in the clefts of rocks in the highlands of Scotland. They are considered a harbinger of death, and they're also psychopomps, which are basically the general umbrella term for a creature that will bring spirits to the afterlife. They are silent hunters but there are times where they will let out three terrifyingly loud bays or barks and they could be heard from miles around even out at sea and it, it was said that if you were listening for them 
you had to, and you did hear them, you had to get to a safe spot by the end of the third bark, or you will die of terror. That's why I like the spirit. <laughs> um, it was also said that the barks were a warning to lock up nursing mothers or nursing pregnant women because it was a sign that the Pusith was going to steal her away and bring her to a fairy mound where she would be forced to feed the Dionysith, which are basically creatures who live in the fairy mound. They are they're kind of like fae or elves. They're not exactly the same. There's little tiny differences. They're basically equal to those two. I didn't get to, uh, into a lot of it because that seems like something I could do for another video. <laughs> but yeah, that's all I had for both of them. That's why I did two, otherwise this video would be not that long. <laughs> Uh, the reason I picked the Kusith is because I read about it when I was a junior in high school. And I was like, these things are awesome. I was writing a story for my creative writing class, and I was like, I'm going to turn this into a character. This is awesome. And I actually heard of a church grim off of Tumblr. I forgot who posted it, but she basically gave that same brief overview. Um, I tried to find some other things. What she didn't put in her blog post was that they were buried alive. That makes me sad. But, um, anyway, thank you guys for watching. I know this was really short. I know I was really jumpy. But, um, thank you so much for watching. If you want to join the Spook Squad, hit the subscribe button. If you like this video, hit the like button, obviously. And, um... If you want, you can comment and tell me of any other creatures that you would like to see on this series. And also, if you want to try to guess what I'm going to be for Halloween, then comment below. Thank you guys so much. I hope you have a wonderful night slash day and my many blessings to everyone.